Hi, my name is Ali Shesavar from Bridge Digital. You may have heard terminology such as a synchronous spark, synchronous spark, or synchronous spark with diode emulation, and these are different switching strategies that we use in power supplies. And in this video, we're going to talk about what each of these terms mean and when to use which one. So uh, first, let's talk about asynchronous or normal switching. Uh, when we talk about a buck converter, we typically just talk about the normal one, which is asynchronous switching. I have drawn the simple circuit here. For simplicity, let's say that we have got an output voltage of 100 volts. We've got an output current of 2 amps and a duty of uh, 50%. Okay. Again, for simplicity, let's say that a forward drop across this uh, diode with the F is equal to 1 volt. Right? So let's see what happens. At um, 2 amps with a duty of 50% and a forward drop of 1 volt, we're going to dissipate around 1 watt of power in a power supply that is 200 watts. You can argue that 1 watt in 200 watts probably is not a lot. Okay, now let's see what happens if the situation reverses. Let's say that instead of this, we actually have a V out of 2 volts, but an I out of 100 amps. I still have 200 watts, but now I have 1 volt drop across a diode. It's the same diode, duty percent, 50 percent, uh, duty of 50 percent. Is the same but I've got 100 amps flowing. So 100 amps times 50% times 1 volt is going to give you 50 watts of losses on a 200 watt power supply. You can see clearly that this is really not going to be acceptable. Somehow we're going to have to reduce the amount of losses in this diode and this is when synchronous switching comes into play. So we've invented a way of reducing the losses across this diode, typically for applications where the output current is very, very high. And we do that by simply adding a MOSFET instead of a diode, and we switch these synchronously like this. So every time the diode is going to conduct, we switch the FET instead. Now if you consider that uh, we can make the RDS of this uh, really, really small, let's say 1 milliohms for simplicity, now you have 100 amps squared times 1 milliohms, taking into account the duty, and the losses in this lower switch is going to be significantly smaller than this diode. So that's all well and good for applications where our, our, our output current is very, very high. We can do synchronous switching. However, as everything else with engineering, every time you get a few advantages, you get a couple of headaches. And of course, there is a catch with this one also. The issue is when we go into discontinuous conduction mode. So when the current of this power supply, the output current falls to a point whereby the inductor current goes to zero, that is when this method actually becomes extremely inefficient. So if I were to show you what happens, let us say that I have got my inductor current, this is time, this is current, and during normal continuous conduction mode, the inductor current is doing something like this. And this is the point whereby the synchronous buck is very, very efficient at high currents. As you reduce the amount of current that you draw, this is going to start falling down. Now on a normal buck, what happens is that when the amount of current gets to a point whereby the inductor current hits zero before the next on period, so this is your on time, this is your off time. If you had a diode, this, the diode would become reverse biased and therefore no current would flow. The current in a MOSFET can reverse. So if you've got synchronous switching, what actually happens is that this diode will reverse, go backwards through the MOSFET, and then you turn the switch back on and it will go like this. So unlike normal asynchronous buck, whereby this current could not go to zero, for the synchronous switcher, this can. Now, 
consider your buck converter topology, this current is now reversing out of the capacitor in order to go somewhere. I'm going to go back to the diagram to show you what happens. Because the current in this can reverse, and my current is going through this continuous conduction mode, the current is now reversing out and it's going that way. Now, in an ideal world, if there was no resistance here and no resistance there, that would be lossless. That is what we study at school, saying a pure capacitance or pure inductor only stores and releases energy. In reality, of course, that is not the case because you've got a certain amount of ESR here and you've got a certain amount of inductor. Uh, call it DCR. This is, in fact, going to be ACR. So there is going to be some losses. And you're doing this backwards and forward action at the rate of your switching frequencies. So let's say if you're switching at 200 kilohertz, you keep pushing energy during this period into the capacitor. It, you lose a little bit there and there. And then it goes discontinuous. You drag it back out and then you lose some more there and there. So a synchronous buck on the low currents, whereby normally the current would go below zero, it's going to become very, very inefficient. Therefore, engineers went on and invented a third category, which is called synchronous buck with diode emulation. And what they did was, in addition to this MOSFET, they put a parallel diode. So a synchronous buck with diode emulation has got a MOSFET and a diode. And the controller decides whether this is being switched or not during high currents, whereby you want the, the, the efficiency of a synchronous switcher, this is being switched and therefore the diode is out of action. When the current gets low enough, the controller recognizes this and stops switching this. And then you end up with just a normal buck. And therefore you kind of get the best of both worlds in that you get high efficiency during high currents because you're in synchronous switching and high efficiency at low currents during uh, um, the diode emulation mode. Yeah? So the choice therefore will be if you have just got a low current cheap buck converter then the chances are that a standard buck converter is good enough. If you've got one whereby you have got high current and it's unlikely to go into low current region then a synchronous buck is probably ideal. And finally if you've got one that is typically using high currents, but every now and then it's going to go into low current region, then you want a synchronous buck with a uh, diode emulation. So this is how we select which switching strategy is best for our application. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope to see you at one of our workshops.